So, Cookie, talk to me. <laughs> Your interest, beginning interest, was always in, in the homosexual things, in gay things, in the gay history. And then you fell on this. What did you think when you first fell on this? Did you think this was the story you were going to tell? Or did you think there was another entire... Talk to us. Well, actually, I was, I was not only on to gay topics, you know, because I remember like uh, in 2004 I did a feature film called Wild Side and the main character was already a transgender person right. and, uh, and I remember to do the film I was, I did a kind of investigation in Paris and I met all the um, all the milieu all, all the people from the transgender scene, you know and I remember that when the film was finished it, it went to Berlin and when it was released, nobody really cared in, in the media. I mean, because all the topic of transgender was not at all something interesting for the people. And what is very interesting is 10 years after, I did a portrait of Bambi and not the Walt Disney uh, little animal, as you can imagine. Uh, Bambi was one of the first French cross-dresser and she was um, a showgirl. She was, you know, working in, in, in the cabaret in Pigalle and she's really a character. And so 10 years after the, the film was um, uh, released in France and, and then I had all the intention of the media and, and the audience, you know, was quite big, you know, for the film. And so I could see a really a changement in mentalities, you know, but, uh, but I had to, to wait 10 years. And now, today, we have Casa Susana, and you could see a new generation really interested in t into all th those topics, you know. And so Casa Susana for me was not like the first film, you know, about uh, cross-dressers or, or transgender uh, person, you know. But then, I mean, I knew very few about uh, the story because I bought the book in 2004 when this couple, you know, uh, who has discovered um, like 300 pictures in the flea market in New York. And I knew that Cindy Sherman also had um, two albums of Casa Susana. And, um, and then uh, I did a show in Arles, a photo show, for a, a kind of big exhibition of the collection that I have of pictures of cross dresses, men and women, through like um, a century, like from the 19th century until the 70s. And because of that show, I had the opportunity to meet an historian of photography. Her name is Isabel Bonnet. She's French. And someone said to me uh, that that girl has written a memoir on Casa Susana. And I was very surprised that even that someone in France who know, you know, Casa Susana and and could write a story about it, you know, and 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 when I met Isabel, Isabel, she's a kind of Sherlock Holmes, you know. She really has made a big investigation into Casa Susana because when the book was released in two thousand four, it went like anywhere nobody really cared about it you know it has a kind of success but nobody uh, did kind of research you know deep research about the whole story and but Isabel did actually and she has found out uh, she has met Catherine and she's found out the house the name of Tito and many uh, very important information it was like a puzzle and so she told me everything she knew at that time. And I said to her, this is a very important story. And we have to do something, you know, about it. So, and it took me quite some time, you know, to, to find the budget. And thanks to PBS in America and Arte in France and BBC in England, we were able to do the film. I, I, I want to say, just to try and put into perspective a little bit. Um, and you were here, of course, with Casa Valentina. And I was here with Casa, Casa yeah. Valentina, but, but um, in, in the 60s, in the, in the time that this all starts, you have to remember that the big battle then was sexual freedom. It was sexual freedom for women. It was sexual freedom 
just beginning for gay people. Um, no one was interested or understood that there was a difference between sexuality and gender. Sure. It wasn't until recently that this generation, this this younger generation now, has put its foot down and said, fuck sexuality, we need to talk about gender. We need to talk about what makes a woman, what makes a man, what is our relationship to ourselves, how are we born, what are we... Um, and also gay people has a kind of despise, you know, with, with transgender person. They, they didn't want to be assimilated, you know, to them. Well, but the funny part was Virginia, as you well know, hated homosexuality. She wanted, as, as I say in the play, I'm there, it's a big scene in the play where she said, we have got to cut our, ourselves away from heterosexuals, from homosexuals. She said, uh, she said in years to come, um, Uh, trans, being transvestite will be as normal as cigarette smoking, while being tra uh, being homosexual will never be accepted. Um, that was that was her opinion. Um, so there was there was a big line to, to drawn there as well. By the way, um, Christine Jorgensen died, still owing me money. I, that bitch owes me money, <laughs> um, and that and because she, she was a figure from my childhood, because I knew her um, from. Uh, maybe 79, 1970. I'm, I'm very old. <laughs> I, you and I are the same age. <laughs> um, so so the, that line, so, the, so people were not as interested. When they came to me with the book, it was Bob Balaban, if you know, a wonderful actor and director, who brought the project to me. And he thought I was going to write this funny play about these men who ran away for the weekend and dressed up as women and then went home and flew airplanes and stuff. And when I sat down, that's what I thought I was going to write as well. And then I bought my first, thank God for eBay, my first Transvestia magazine. I now have every single book of Transvestia magazine. I have them all and read them all. And when I realized, because you would think if there was ever a homogenous group in this world, it's going to be heterosexual men who like to wear dresses and go to the Catskills. That's going to be a group that really gets along and understands each other, right? When I did my research, what I found out was none of them were alike. Not two of them thought about life as like One, it was only about looking in the mirror. One, it was about photographs. One, it was just going to bed at night in something that felt wonderful. One, it was the clothing. One, it was the hair. One, it was the image. Um, Virginia herself said, um, I, am, I am a heterosexual woman when I'm in drag. Therefore, of course, I'll have sex with heterosexual men. But I'm not gay. <laughs> so there was nothing. So I, I was just totally shocked to find out that these people were all such individual human beings. And I think that's what you bring out in, in the movie is we, we try to see some of these stories. Yeah. And yeah, there was a, a diversity in terms of identity, you know, and what they were looking for about that. Even uh, the trans identity was banned uh, at that time, you know. Virginia and Susanna were very against that, you know. They, they wanted, they, they used to call themselves uh, themselves cross dressers, and that was it, you know. Woman within. Yes. Exactly, and um, and they were very afraid. But the context of of those times can explain also a lot. I think fear was everywhere, and uh, they wanted to have fun and to express themselves. But on the other hand, they were quite afraid that because they could lose a lot. You know, they had a good situation most of them, and um, so it was quite tricky. But There is one character that I think is really fascinating into Casa Susana. It's Maria, uh, the wife of Tito Susana. Uh, because Maria was, uh, she came from a very traditional uh, Italian family, you know, and she has this free mind, you know, just to understand all these people, you know, and, and to accept them and to actually to put a lot of money, you know, to create this place, you know, and even the cabaret. And but the cabaret was a very smart move, you know, because it was a way to protect them, and and especially um, because of the people. From the police. Huh? From the police. 
from the police, from the sheriff, from the mayor, and and everybody, you know, because then the people uh, would accept better in a better way to to see you know people cross dress and and do, going to the supermarket. Uh, uh, wearing these clothes and this makeup and whatever, you know, and people said, oh, yes, of course, this is because of the cabaret, you know. And, but for me, what is also fascinating is that at that time, you have absolutely nothing to help you to understand who you are and what was going on with yourself, you know. It was really a big question. And, um, and probably Casa Susana was the only place where they could meet each other and, you know, and, and talk about it and try to understand a little bit uh, who they were. But on the other hand, what was, I think, probably uh, problematic is Virginia and Susanna has created a kind of rules uh, in terms of identity. They were very strict about that. And in a way, and they were a kind of reactionary, I would say. And because trans, trans identity was something that really feared them. And at one point, probably, um, they didn't really understand the, um, what, what was going on with, with certain person that used to go there. And, and probably uh, who were a uh, transgender person, you know. Well, they, they had, as you said, they had no one to lead them. So uh, they wanted to normalize it as much as possible. I think the, that's true, yes. They wanted to make it as normal. So if you said, I have these two souls in, in me, there is this woman within, you can sort of, that's poetic, that's romantic, yeah. it's whatever. But I was born in the wrong body. You're getting into something that's a little scary. I, I think when you talk about surgery, it, it becomes it becomes more frightening. What I found most um, uh, Maria was this loving mother. Yeah. Um, no matter how much these gentlemen becoming women in this personality in their time there wanted to they could never be her there was something about her that was this loving mother that is this loving mother that is this that is this goddess figure in in their lives i uh, when i was doing my research um they talked so little about her and I, my brain always came back to her of how she put up with this, how she lived with this. And, you know, when I was writing the play, we were already in previews, and I, and the end of the play was not there, and the director and the producers would yell at me all the time, and, I, and it finally hit me. Um, at the very end of the play, um, she sends Tito up to get dressed, or in the play it's George, um, to go uh, up and get dressed, that, you know, the rest of the weekend's still here, you can finish out the weekend, go up and change. And as he goes upstairs, she said, she says, I wonder when you'll go up those stairs and I never see George again. I wonder, and can you tell me, are you George or are you Valentina? And Valentina sits down at the makeup table and just begins to apply lipstick. And, that, and that's how the play ends. Um, and I think, I think if you had more interviews with more people, if they still existed, we could ask more questions. But it's, I, I find this world utterly. Did you enjoy the film? Tell him. <laughs> Thank Tell you. Tell the man. Do you all know the original book, the book of photographs? Had you all, anybody seen it? It's out there. It's, it's still for sale, yes? I think it's out of print now. Is it out of print? Yeah. eBay. <laughs> the source of all good things. Um, but we're going to make, I mean, Isabel's going to make an exhibition in France, in all. It's going to be a kind of re a photo retrospective. I'll you at the airport. <laughs> and, 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 and the book is going to be also made uh, for the exhibition. Uh, her book about Casa Susana. Yes. So it, has it been translated into English? Because I've never seen it. 
Um, I mean, the memoir, you mean? Yes. Uh, no, um, it's going to be a really new book uh, with, yeah. with a lot of uh, unreleased pictures and uh, uh, with the text of uh, Susan Stryker, which is an historian of, of, the, of the queer culture and, um, and other texts and et cetera. I, uh, by the way, um, uh, just, uh, Ryan Murphy bought the rights to Casa Valentina uh, to make a, a, a series out of it, but never never did. He, he decided to go ahead. He did pose um, that season instead. So, um, why don't Maybe we one some, day. Well, I, I'm, I'm hoping someday. And the play does get done every now and then. It is, it's one of my great pride. I, I love that play. And I gave you a, I gave you a copy of it. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So let's, so let's ask some questions of, of our filmmaker while he's here. But I would like also just to pay a tribute because Diana and Gregory and Betsy and Kate, of course, uh, were so important, you know, they were so generous. You have also to realize that Diana, for the first time, was urging herself, you know, into the film because she never said anything to anybody for like 60 years, right? And it was really brave, you know, to do this. And Gregory has this story of his family I mean, for so many years, very few people uh, knew about that, you know, the whole story. And, um, and I don't know, it was so, he, he said the story in a so warm way, you know. He was never a, a judgmental. I'm sorry, my English sometimes is a bit like gotcha. that. Yeah, <laughs> okay. And... Um, God speaks all languages. Okay. And Betsy um, was also so 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 generous with this very complex relation that she has with her father and, and mother and 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 Kate was also she was so uh, brave to come from Australia. She was actually at that time quite sick, you know. And I think for her it was very important to be into the film and to tell a story because. She, I mean, she has dedicated her life into militancy, you know, in, in Australia, and to explain people what is trans identity and what was her life, you know. And so I think probably for her, the film was um, the final uh, move, yeah. Her, bu her book um, is available um, f for purchase. It's a, it's a wonderful book, and, um, and she was uh, an incredible person. Not only did she fight for, for uh, the rights of, of transgender people, but she fought um, for, um, uh, to unionize librarians. <laughs> she, that was her last battle um, in Australia, was, was that. And her daughter and I uh, have remained very good friends. And she was a wonderful librarian. And we also had that, because that's what my mother was. So we had that in, in common. Um, and just if you're interested, um, because an ex-lover of mine is a real estate agent in Hunter, um, the building is for sale. <laughs> uh, it's $22,000. I can tell you, you can get it for fifteen. <laughs> it's not very pretty. <laughs> Okay, a couple of questions, and then we have to go because I have to go to the bathroom. The tricky thing with the editing of the narrative of the film was because you have like uh, four lines, you know, I mean, Betsy, Diane, Kate, and Gregory. Um, and what was difficult is that Kazi Susanna was in the center. It was the intersection. But then you have to make people understand that each life was very different because everybody came from very different background. And then the end of each life also was very different. So we have to build a kind of narrative um, and to cross you know, all these lines and to focus on Casa Susana. But Casa Susana couldn't be the only topic in a way. You, know, you, you can't tell the, the whole thing um, all the time through Casa Susana, you know, because many people that used to go there, uh, I mean, there was uh, the regular ones, but there was also the, the casual ones, you know, so you, so it was, you know, difficult just only to focus on that. And I think it also would haven't been true to do this, you know. And um, so, yeah, it took us quite some time, you know, to find the the good structure to do it. 
the, uh, the, and the original name of the the first building is is the Chevalier Deon, Deon. which is uh, a French real person yes. who was a real cross dresser in in history, and and they named it after the Chevalier. Then, of course, when they got to the smaller building, it became the Casa Susanna. Chevalier Deon was a spy, a famous one. Yeah, you're old enough to remember. <laughs> Okay. What was the opinion? Well, you have, I mean, the f one of the first surgery uh, um, that happened was, was uh, th there was actually a film was made about that called The, the, the Danish Girl. And the, the first surgery was quite, um, uh, didn't succeed and, and it was a, a huge problem. And it was a Danish... Uh, a uh, transgender person, you know, and during the war, before the war, the Second World War, you have a very important person called Magnus Hirschfeld. Magnus Hirschfeld was uh, um, an historian and a sexologist uh, a person, and he has created a kind of, um, how do you say in English, um, uh, a, a special place where you have a lot of books and a lot of documentation Research. and a kind of research center uh, for um, gay topics, and but also um, transgender. The, the, the term transgender didn't exist at that time. But uh, let's say all the question of identity, and so a lot of transvestites used to go there, and he was a very uh, important figure into this very alternative world, you know, in Berlin. And then when the Nazis in, in the 30s uh, came, um, they burnt out everything and uh, Hirschfeld has to run away to France and, and he died in Nice actually. But all his doc documentation, which was very rare, was destroyed. And um, so, um, what was your question? The, the, the attitude in oh, okay. So, and, but during uh, the two war, uh, there was a lot of cabaret, and there was this kind of tradition, you know, of uh, tolerance of in these very special places, you know, where a uh, crossdresser could express themselves, you know, on stage. But the thing is, the law was very strict that uh, out of this place, it was totally forbidden for a woman or a man to crossdress in the street. And uh, even in Paris, I remember Bambi uh, said to me that uh, there was a lot of cabaret in Pigalle, for example, and um, the chief of the police in Paris was really, uh, she, he has an obsession with all the cross-dressers because of course most of them, they didn't care about the law and they wanted you know, to transgress all the time. And so they used to go back home, uh, cross-dress as women, you know, and um, and it was always very problematic, and uh, and it was the same in Germany. But I was I was going to say you know let us not look down on them. In the 1970s, my friend uh, Kurt Russell, um, when he would appear on the Carol Burnett show or something like that, you know, on television, they made him smoke a cigar first. He'd always have to come out in a tuxedo. Smoke, you know, smoking a cigar, talking, blah, 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 and then he'd come out as Barbara Streisand. <laughs> you know, so we're talking about the 70s uh, in New York. So, so it's not like um, we, we got anywhere. We still have a long way to go. But like I said, that's why you have a governor in Florida who said yesterday, woke. Florida is where woke comes to die. He said that yesterday. So we still have a lot of work to do. Anyway, we have to go home. <laughs> no, but I mean, <laughs> like you said, I mean, um, I think it's very important also to, to say to the young generation also that, okay, this is a part of our history, you know, and so we need this kind of film, you know, to remind people that trans identity and all the queer culture, you know, it's not uh, something that it's uh, appearing just right now, you know, that... It has a past, and, and it has also a lot of people that we have to pay tribute to them because because of them, we are. Uh, I mean, we're here and free, and we're not free. We're we're working towards it. <laughs> we can still be arrested. This, there are thirty-eight laws about to be passed in the United States, making us not free. Let us not kid ourselves. Yeah. I don't know what's going on in France, but here we're in trouble. 
That's for sure. At the moment. But anyway, we gotta go, Cookie. Okay. Thank you.